What up, guys? And welcome back. That was fast, good, because we're about to start this practice round. Okay, okay, okay. It looks like we're starting out a little bit slow, but all right. So let's do it. First step, make the equation equal to zero. Well, my equation is already equal to zero. Okay, step two. Bang! Factored. That was easy. Okay. Step three. Yeah! Oh, that was it? That was it, right? Let's check. If I put 10 in here, it's 10 minus 10, zero, zero times anything. <sighs> Good. Negative five, okay, not there, but as soon as I put negative five here, blank times zero equals <sighs> blank. Isn't that where the graph would cross the x-axis? Yeah, okay. Now remember, we couldn't use the other method of square roots here. We can factor this though. Factor it so the factor is equal to zero. <laughs> Number two. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. That's more like it. Okay, let's get to it. Step number one, that's not equal to zero, right? So what I like to do is I let's clear this side out. Like I can take all of these things and move them over to the side. Now you can pick them up and move them. Make sure you change the sign on them or just subtract them from both sides, right? Like this. Yeah, like that. Now everything on this side will be gone, so that'll be a zero. Now, when I subtracted it over here, I made sure I put stuff with like terms, right? I'm going to take this x squared and subtract it from this thing that says x squared, right? And if I had a number over here without a letter, I would have put it right under here. Yeah, exactly right. Let's see what we got left. Yeah, now everything is on this side. This is equal to zero, and I'm ready to factor. Uh-huh, uh just like that. And of course, I said the factor is equal to... Zero, of course. It, I mean, of course you gotta solve those. So I guess I, I probably should have added that here. And solve, like this. Yep, just like that. Uh-huh. Next one. Ooh, okay, we're kicking it up some notches. I love it, I love it. Now this looks a little bit different, right? It's asking a different question. Now, is it asking a different question though? Okay, well let's talk. It's asking where this parabola is crossing the x-axis. Now, didn't we already talk about this? Those are the solutions, right? Yeah, so if you're given an equation for a parabola and asked where it crosses the x-axis or maybe ask for the solutions or the roots or the zeros, you know what to do? It might say f of x, it might say y. It don't matter what it said before because guess what it says now? Zero, exactly right. Now, factor. Good, and now of course, if the factor is equal to zero, and so. Good, 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 good. We got time for one more. Okay, here we go. We're like back to basics here. That's what's up. So it's already equal to zero, so you put a next step. Factor. Oh, what? Oh, this can't be factored. This is what we call prime. So does that mean there are no solutions? Well, I don't know, but I know what it does mean. Yeah, it means if I graph that, it's not going to cross the x-axis. Yeah, uh-huh. So this can happen. When it's factor time and you can't factor and it's prime, that just means this, that our parabola doesn't cross the x-axis. Yeah, but if we're still after solutions, there's a new way. Next video. We got time for one more question. Ew, decimals? I mean, it's equal to zero and all, but how are we going to factor decimals? Be? In a way, we can factor decimals. So even if this does cross the x-axis, we ain't going to find them spots by factoring. Uh-uh. So remember the last question where I told you there's a new way or there's another way in the next video? That's the same thing for this way. It's called the quadratic formula. We'll talk about that next time. Bye, guys.